if you want to um don't give the child fossils hey i tell you like uh harry potter i mean it's kind of scary you know what i mean like there's some scary characters in there you know but but I think Harry Potter will come out on top. I hope. Yeah, it's kind of a scary movie too. So she watches it with her cousin that's older. And so hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I just put again, once again, in the, the chat, the Nearpod link. So if you haven't been able to jump on it yet, please go and do so. Um, Today, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to talk about political systems, okay? Which will then include politics, which then can get kind of heated. And I've actually had to, um, on this <laughs> lesson, actually disable the chat, right? So let's just keep it civil, guys. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to preach any kind of one political ideology over another um but it's all good so assuming you'd prefer lockwood and Comp okay i'll have to read that book series that sounds good i i like different books and then especially ones that end in movies so i can watch the movie and see how different it is that's what i like to do oh i'm i'm not sharing my screen i forgot to share my screen okay let me do that real quick All right, there we go. My my screen is now shared. Um, but if you can follow along on the Nearpod, that'll be best so you can um, interact that way. Okay, got to do one more thing here before we begin. Okay, all right. So once again, uh, this is going to be recorded just for those that weren't able to um, make it and it will be restored up to one year. Um, as I said, the biggest thing on the virtual expectation is the chat button. Okay. Or the chat feature today, please make sure you keep it civil when we're talking about politics. If I have to disable the chat, I will. Um, and then you just have to listen to me, right? Okay. So the objective today, so what's going to happen is you're going to be given a form and this is actually going to be on the OLS, you will take a political ideology quiz at the very end, okay? And you're just going to put in the political scale which you which the, uh, the quiz identifies you as, okay? So it's really pretty easy, but it's going to make you think a little bit about what you, what your beliefs are, that kind of stuff. Okay, so as we're talking about, I think we know more than ever uh, our nation is split and divided. Um, and it's divided into political parties. Um, so I see a lot of you saying you don't like politics. Yeah, but that's the way our, our government works, right? Um, it is stressful, right? Uh, it is... I, I wouldn't say it's dumb but you know it is annoying and tense all those kind of things that you guys are kind of saying um but it's it's how things kind of get happen it's how our infrastructure is built in the united states and so unfortunately it's kind of needed okay all right so we're going to listen to this about this little video about political parties and kind of where they came from There are two main political parties in the United States, the Republicans and the Democrats. What is a political party? Why are there only two main parties? A political party is a group of people who have joined together because they share common principles, common beliefs, and common values, and they seek to control government by winning elections. Members of a party work to convince the government to adopt laws 
regulations, and programs which reflect their party's beliefs. Political parties have a long history, both in the United States and in other countries as well. The United States has what is known as a two-party system. A two-party system is a political structure in which only two political parties have a genuine chance of winning elections. However, it does not mean that only two parties are allowed to exist, as there are numerous other smaller parties. The two-party system developed in Great Britain. In the latter half of the 1600s and throughout the 1700s, two political parties, the Whigs and the Tories, emerged and established themselves as the dominant parties. This long-standing tradition of two main parties probably led to the eventual adoption of a similar system in the United States. Initially, the Founding Fathers intended for the American government to avoid politics. In fact, in his farewell address, George Washington warned against the existence of political parties, suggesting that such organizations were the enemies of government and would only distract government from its intended purpose. However, early political disagreements gave rise to the Federalist Party and the Democratic-Republican Party. Since that time, the United States has nearly always had two dominant parties. Currently, the two main political parties in the United States are the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Every political party has what is known as a platform. A platform is a public statement of the party's main beliefs and guiding principles. Each of the stated principles of a platform is known as a plank. Party platforms can be rather lengthy, with modern parties having hundreds of planks. The party will adopt or update its platform every four years at the party's national convention. Political parties serve a wide variety of purposes. One of the most important functions a party serves is to nominate candidates. This helps a voter narrow his or her choices. Instead of voters studying a potentially limitless field of candidates, each party selects nominees. This allows the voter to focus attention on just three or four candidates and make a more informed decision. Another function of political parties is to inform voters. Whether it's through local, grassroots involvement such as letter writing campaigns, or party leaders speaking on television, parties attempt to let the general public know what's going on. This could also take the form of passing out flyers or pamphlets, or staging a large protest rally. The party that is in power can also set the agenda. This means that the party leaders will establish a course for the nation to follow. Whether it's a good course or a bad course would likely determine how long that particular party stayed in power. One final function of political parties is to serve as watchdog. Both parties do an effective job of watching the other party to make sure they are doing the things they are supposed to. If one party becomes corrupt, the other will surely inform the public. So, even though the Founding Fathers did not desire political parties to exist, they will surely continue to be a part of the American political system for years to come. All right, so that kind of gave you a basic overview about what political parties are. Um, so political parties are a group of voters with common interests that influence the government, okay? And they try to win elections. Um, the U.S. has a two-party system because there are only two main parties that hold most of the power. And somebody said on there, I, I liked their, their comment a while back that said, we need more than two parties. Um, unfortunately, the way it's kind of set up that, that we can only, you know, the way it's set up that if there's a fraction, they'll just 
all go to another party and then we'll still have two parties. Um, so it's kind of hard, at least in the way the, the system set up to have more than two parties that are in power in the US, even though there are third parties, but they, they vote with the other ones. There are more than two, but there are two big ones, right? Yes, there are more than two and we're gonna be talking about third parties coming up in a bit. So the function of the political parties are to nominate candidates, inform, inform vote, voters, ensure candidates are qualified, help govern in Congress and state legislatures, uh, and act as watchdogs, especially, especially for officials of other parties. So when somebody does something wrong, you hear all kinds of outcry, right? <laughs> okay, um, you can kind of see that so third parties, so this is like a third party, what happened at a third party candidate. In 1992, um, Ross Perot was a third party candidate and he ran against, um, so there was George H.W. Bush and there was um, Clinton that were running against each other in the two main parties. But Ross Perot took up a whole bunch of what we call independent or third party voters. And you can see he had the biggest majority um, that's ever in like a general election. And what happened there is it took away a lot from H.W. Bush's uh, thing and Clinton actually won the presidency in 1992. So, all right, make sure we're keeping it civil on there, on the chat, please. Okay, so today's parties, we have the Republican Party is uh, one of the main parties. Uh, it was born from a dispute over slavery. Uh, president Lincoln was the first Republican president. Um, some things that they tend more, they tend more, more to lean towards stronger state governments, less uh, change and more traditional, less taxes on the rich and less government spending. And their symbol is what we call the elephant. And then here are some uh, some very prominent Republican members. Uh, this was taken before President Trump won or whatever. So he'd probably be one uh, on this list as well. But yeah, President Lincoln, um, Ronald Reagan, President Bush, Condoleezza Rice, uh, oh, I forgot Sarah Palin, and uh, Mitt Romney, who is one of our senators in Utah. Okay, the Democratic Party, uh, it has its roots from Jefferson's, Jefferson administration. Uh, they call them Democratic Republican Party. It tends to support stronger federal government, more change, taxing the rich more, spending more on like government programs uh, such as welfare. Then their symbol is uh, the donkey. And so here's some prominent members of the Democratic Party. So we have uh, John F. Kennedy, Hillary Clinton, um, President Barack Obama, uh, Oprah Winfrey, and uh, Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton. And then also um, we have President Biden, who is now the, the leader of that party because he won the presidency. Okay, so what I want you to do, this is a little fill in the blank activity. So if you could please go and do that. Um, all you gotta do is go and just drag and put this wherever it goes, okay? So I'll give you a second to do that. Um, good question, is that there a reason why their symbols are do you know, I don't know the the context behind the the elephant and the donkey. I'm sorry. I wish I did, but I, I'm not sure of it. If I would have known, I, I would tell you. <laughs> I should probably look it up and research it a bit because that, that is a good question. So maybe that's something you can do. Okay. So make sure you put those in. And you just push it done. Okay. So I think we already talked about this. Uh, 
you know, Democrats, they have the strong central government, Federalist, they are called social, socially liberal, uh, loose interpret interpretation of the Constitution, um, free markets with limitations by the government, and they lean to kind of the left is what it's called. Um, if you look in like chambers of like the Senate or the House, um, even in state governments, you'll see that the Republicans are sat to the right of the speaker and the other ones are to the left. That's why they kind of say you're lean to the left or to the right. Republicans, um, they have strong state government, anti-federalist, socially conservative, strict interpretation of the Constitution, uh, more with free markets and towards the right. So third parties, um, what does federalist mean? Federalist means that they have, they tend to be more like a, a stronger federal government and that the federal government should run more of the country. And the Republicans are anti-federalist, which mean means they think states, like each state should have more rights um, and that local leaders should be able to make the rules rather than the federal government. So good question there. Um, so third parties, they rarely win an election. Um, however, they can affect the outcome of elections as we saw kind of the Ross Perot election. We looked at that one. The reasons why they fail, they don't have enough votes on the ballot. They have trouble raising money and they lack name rec recognition. Um, but even when they win elections, like they have some independents that are in Congress um, you may have heard of Senator Bernie Sanders. He runs as an independent um, candidate, but he caucuses with, so what it's called, the Democrats. So he sides with the Democrats when he's in, but he runs as an independent candidate. And he ran as an independent um, there. Is that the same with Aaron Burr? Oh, that's how your family likes. Cool. All right. So we kind of talked to the left, to the right. Um, so the right means people who hold more traditional values and to the left are people who support more change in society and, and certain change. Okay. This leads us to our assignment. Okay. So what we're going to do on our assignment, um, let me just go to the course real quick. So if you go to the course, um, you go to content, okay, and it's going to click you here. And you're going to go under uh, lesson six, which is politics. And you can click on this quiz here. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this quiz. It's really easy and simple. It's already embedded in here. So we'll pull up and you're going to click quiz right here. And next, and then you just got to answer these questions, okay? So I'm just going to kind of go through it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even reading it right now, but you should kind of read it. And at the very end, it's going to give you exactly where you kind of lean, okay, political-wise. And so all you need to do on the assignment <clears throat> Blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what I mean. I don't want to do it. So you'll start the quiz and it only has two questions for it. Okay. So did you take the quiz? True. You have to, if you don't take it, you don't get these points. Right. And then whatever it says at the very end, that's what you put and you submit the quiz. That's all you got to do for your assignment. Okay. Um, as we go back to the, the course plan, <clears throat> This is our actually our last live class. The block ends on the 18th. So you have this that's due on there and then you need to take your final test. And I'm actually gonna unlock your final test right now so you can see it. But everything we kind of learned, okay, we've learned is gonna kind of be in it. It's just like the pre-test, okay? And 
everything needs to be done by the 18th. Yep, this block is over. <laughs> it's it's all the way over if you can believe that. So so I'm going to open up that final um final test here for you. And so now those are your two things that you need to do. Uh no, you do not get this Friday off. That the class doesn't or the block doesn't end till the 18th. So we still got a while. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I have for class today. Do you guys have any questions or anything like that? 